a new update to a shocking story. A Texas father and son are now behind bars charged in the violent shooting death of a pregnant teen and her boyfriend. 18-year-old Savannah Soto and her boyfriend Matthew Guerra were reported missing before Christmas, as both families grew concerned when Savannah, who was nine months pregnant, never showed up to her scheduled doctor's appointment to have an induced labor. Their bodies were discovered in the parking lot of a San Antonio apartment complex. Initially, limited information was known about the crime, only that both were shot in the head, as the city's police chief referred to the crime scene as complex and very perplexing. But now a new twist. On January 3rd, San Antonio PD announced the arrest of two, a father and son duo, 53-year-old Ramon Preciado and his son, 19-year-old Christopher Preciado. Uh, they're going to be charged, the, the father's, uh, I'm sorry, the son's going to be charged this, this, after, this evening with capital murder and the father's going to be charged with abuse of a corpse. So we do expect uh, more charges to be uh, to be pending. In a press conference after their arrest, Sergeant Washington Moscoso explained to reporters the evidence that helped put them behind bars, including one key piece of evidence that came from Savannah herself. One of the key pieces of evidence that we did collect at the scene was um, Savannah's cell phone. And uh, so our, that was given handed over to our tech our technology team, who was able to do uh, download some information on there. With the assistance of the U.S. Secret Service, we were able to get enough information. Um, and so that, that information was given to our detectives today. With that information, the detective, uh, detectives were able to uh, find a possible location of where the, the suspect vehicle that was released on that, on that surveillance camera, the surveillance video, a uh, possible location where that suspect vehicle might be. They made that location, and sure enough, the vehicle was there. They did a little bit of surveillance on the video or on the on the uh, vehicle, and then um, were able to determine which house it belonged to. That surveillance video in which Sergeant Moscoso is referring to is this video. It shows a dark-colored pickup truck pulling up to Matthew Silver Kia, but police now confirm at this time both Matthew and Savannah were already dead. A few more seconds into the video, the driver of the pickup can be seen getting out of the truck and walking to the gray Kia, having a conversation with the driver before later walking back to the pickup and then both vehicles are seen driving away. After tracing the pickup back to where the Prisados resided, police say Christopher's father Ramon answered the door and immediately knew why investigators were there. Through interrogating the individuals, the uh, our detectives had enough uh, Based on what they said, there was enough information there to get a warrant signed by a judge tonight, again, to charge Christopher with capital murder and Ramon with uh, abuse of a corpse. These two individuals are, to, are the only sus suspects that we were looking for. They, they were arrested. There were many names being thrown around on the Internet. Uh, those people had nothing to do with this. We, we vetted them and, and everything. They, they didn't have anything to do with these murders. So the individual, the, again, Christopher, uh, we believe committed the murders of, of Matthew and Savannah. And then Ramon uh, helped kind of dump the button. So what caused the 19-year-old to pull the trigger on a soon-to-be mother and her boyfriend? Police say they believe it's a drug deal gone bad. So there's no apparent connection to the apartment complex. It's just a place where they want to go dump the... Uh, Dispose or hide the vehicle with the bodies in it, and it appears that um, the it was a drug deal. So there was like a drug connection to the uh, the suspect and the two victims. And here's what else we know: according to police, the murders took place just before midnight on December 21st, meaning Savannah and Matthew had been dead a few days before the discovery of their bodies inside Matthew's Kia on December 26th. The Bear County Medical Examiner confirmed the couple both died from what could be described as execution style, both dying from a gunshot wound to the head. At this time, police did not reveal or specify where the killings took place before their bodies were moved to the apartment complex. The crime was heinous and the arrests were swift. But according to forensic death investigator Joseph Scott Morgan, he's not surprised at all police made the arrest so soon. When you take a look at that CCTV footage, uh, involving, you know, this exchange that's going on between the subject in the, in the truck and then the subject in the Kia, uh, which turns out, I think, to be Matthew's Kia. Uh, I'm not surprised because, look, let's face it, the person that got out of that truck was very distinct in appearance. Uh, 
uh, this kind of morbidly obese person. Uh, you can appreciate their height. You can certainly appreciate the style of the truck. Uh, heck, you can you can almost make out the digits on the on the license plate of the vehicle. It just needed to be tweaked a little bit. So yeah, the, the fact that they were able to get this tie back is not surprising to me in the least. I'm I'm glad that they are off the streets. Morgan, who has investigated numerous crime scenes, says it's possible investigators already know where Savannah and Matthew were killed. And as police still continue their investigation, Morgan says it's Matthew's vehicle that could be rich with key forensic evidence. And that becomes kind of a secondary scene at this point. Uh, because if a vehicle is involved, you're going to be looking for tire tracks. You're going to be looking for deposition of, say, blood at that other location, which they think that these individuals uh, were killed at. So you have to be very careful. Uh, and because it's very fragile evidence, you're talking about blood deposition, maybe tire tracks, maybe spent cartridges uh, that might be uh, at that location. You have to really take care. The upside with a vehicle there it's vehicles can be very complex um we've seen that in the coburger case i actually identified his car as a rolling crime scene uh i think even more so here because we have uh both of the decedents within the cabin of this vehicle and you have to think about <clears throat> how were they how did they wind up in the positions that they were in uh, were they drug in place? You know, Matthew was allegedly in the back seat of this of this Kia, which is not a big vehicle. And uh, Savannah, from what I've heard at least, she was in the front passenger seat, and I think the baby carrier may have been on top of her. Uh, so I can't validate that at this point, but I think that that really gives you some insight. That means that within the cabin of this vehicle, you have movement that's going on. Uh, they have a perpetrator in custody. So you're looking for biological tiebacks from that suspect to the interior of that vehicle. Um, one image, because they're alleging uh, that it's a, a father-son duo, and the son has got markedly distinct hair. I think everybody would agree with that long, wavy, dark. If he drove that vehicle, which some are saying he was operating that vehicle, if you just found his hair, a viable hair within that vehicle, you're talking about DNA at this point in time, not to mention any kind of the touch elements, uh, you know, where he's touching the steering wheel, the gear lever, the ignition, anything like that. It's going to be an evidence rich environment. And if these poor two kids were killed other in another location and then placed into that vehicle, you might have issues like, um, dragging of of the body and it's depositing blood. And that's going to look completely different uh, from blood that is deposited as a result of a dynamic gunshot wound. That's going to be critical. But what about the close range contact gunshot wound that police confirmed Matthew died from? Well, according to Morgan, not only did that detail pique his interest, he says it could also explain the relationship between the suspected killer and Matthew. If you're talking about contact, you're talking about placing the weapon, if you know, the surface of the head, the muzzle has to actually come into contact with the skin like this. That's very personal and up close. So how do you achieve that? And it gives you an idea about the relationship between the perpetrator and the victim. We don't know about Savannah at this point. We know this about Matthew. And so when you think about this, um, how did the perpetrator get that close to him and where, because most people are going to fight, you know, if somebody places a weapon to their head, they're going to retract from it, try to get away. But apparently he stayed in place long enough so that the weapon could make contact with the skin. And that's very distinctive. You can pick up on that at autopsy. That's going to be a very big tell here in this case. As for what investigators could still be combing through, Morgan says evidence such as cell phone records, social media accounts, as well as surveillance and CCTV footage, which already helped crack the case wide open. And as for the Texas father and son now behind bars, for Ramon, when asked if he had any remorse by reporters, he responded, quote, aren't you sorry for lying about what you're saying? You don't even know what's going on. You just make stuff up like always, end quote. 
Meanwhile, his son Christopher, who remained tight-lipped during the perp walk, faces charges that could carry life imprisonment or the death penalty. Savannah's mother, Gloria, took to social media to express her relief that her daughter, her boyfriend, and what would have been their grandchild's killer are now locked up. I'm, I'm glad that they are off the street. Updated court records reveal Christopher Prisado has been booked on several charges, including capital murder and abusing a human corpse. He has his bond set at $1 million. Meanwhile, his father is being held on a more than half a million dollar bond. Records reveal Ramon faces charges, including abuse of corpse. His next court date is slated for February 7th. Reporting for Law and Crime, I'm Elizabeth Milner.